In this video, you'll see breakpoints examples in Bootstrap 5. Now we can talk about responsiveness because here um, it's not um, it's no hamburger menu yet, but here it, it it already is, right? So we can also change that. So the thing with uh, Bootstrap is when you talk about responsiveness, Bootstrap has a mobile first philosophy. So from their perspective, you start like this, right? You don't actually have to do this, but um, this is simply how they how they have structured the bootstrap classes and things like that. So you start from mobile first and then you can decide at which breakpoint, right? So bootstrap has a breakpoint. And let's see, this, these are the ones that you're gonna use often. So let's see, breakpoints. Yeah, so these are the important breakpoints that you get in bootstrap. So you can uh, see we have small, medium, large. Um, we can decide from which breakpoint onward that does it need to be expanded. So we could say, for example, from um, medium or small, let's say small, from small and onwards, it should be expanded. So from 576 pixels of width of the viewport, right? So when this viewport is 576 pixels wide or bigger, it should be expanded. Right now, we can actually see this, it's ex it's expanding when it, when it reaches the large breakpoint, which is 992. We're gonna change this to small. Right, so you can use these uh, suffixes like SM or LG with a lot of classes to really customize the, the, the styling based on some kind of breakpoint. Right, so now on mobile, it's still going to be a, um, a hamburger menu, right? But then when we get to the small breakpoint, it will be expanded. That's the same as in the example. So this looks pretty cool. But now the thing is, it's going to be like this on all viewport, right? So what we actually want is this horizontal layout only on wider viewport, right? So maybe only when it has crossed a certain breakpoint. So here we could say only when it has, you know, when it has crossed this, maybe the small breakpoint and bigger, do we want to have this um, horizontal layout? So what you can do is you can go to these columns and you can say it should take up six units when it, when it reaches the, the small breakpoint. Right, and when you do that, the default is by the way stacked. Yeah, so this is working now. You can see that it's stacked, and then when it crosses the uh, small breakpoint, it gets six units each, and we get that horizontal layout. Now, I was a little bit confused because here in the carousel, something disappeared on the small viewport. And that's actually um, some the, the default behavior in carousels is that these captions, it hides them on small viewport, right? So this is actually something that we haven't, um, um, changed yet so in carousels we do want to make sure that these captions do not get removed and they do that by default with these two classes so this means display none and then from the medium breakpoint and onwards they make it display block again that's how they hide it so on smaller than medium it's hidden so we just want to remove this so that so that it's never uh, hidden now the captions always stay here, right? So when you use captions, that's a tricky one. Now about responsiveness, by the way, in Bootstrap, I told you that it has a mobile first philosophy, right? So initially the default layout is that it's stacked and then we can define a breakpoint at which point it should be changed, right? That's how we did it here. And that's how it also, that's how it always works with uh, Bootstrap. So you can use this infix in the classes, in most classes, we also use this here, for example, navbar expand small, right? So you can use it in many classes, but this always means from that breakpoint onwards and bigger, right? So it, it, it starts off from the mobile first uh, approach, and then you can uh, do something when it gets bigger and bigger. Now, does that mean that you have to develop your website from a mobile first approach? Uh, perspective as well like do you need to do mobile first or desktop first well i always do desktop first so even when i do when i use bootstrap i would use desktop first right because that's that's what i prefer in many ways i'm more of a desktop user myself i'm not a very heavy mobile user so i tend to uh, prefer developing websites from the desktop first approach however it does depend a little bit um on your team, on uh, the type of project that you're creating. Um, but simply because Bootstrap has a mobile first philosophy does not mean that you have to create your Bootstrap websites from a mobile first approach. So um, that's just a side note. Now, when you give everything an equal uh, size, so we have, we have 12 units, right? And we give each one four. When you have an equal size, you don't need to specify the actual number. Right, so if you just say call, it will automatically divide up the space equally like that. Now what we want 
is of course that on uh, that the initial layout is stacked. Um, right now it will always stay like this, right? Where it's like expanded and horizontal, but we only want that from a particular viewport um, and onward. Right, so now we can use those breakpoints again. Maybe we only want that on XL and bigger. So you only have to add XL here. And now it's, it will be stacked. That's the default layout. And only on XL and bigger will it, will it become wide like that. Okay, so then we get to the cart. So let's think about the layout here. We're going to use the grid system again. So let's actually look at the default layout is that it is that it is stacked, right? So these cards are stacked now and only from a particular breakpoint and onwards do they become that horizontal layout, right? So very easy to do with the grid system. You start off with a row, right? And then um, you have 12 units to allocate and we want those units, we want those uh, columns to be equally wide, right? But only from a particular breakpoint and onwards. So what you can say, you don't have to specify the number, but we have three columns, so we're gonna have four, and they're gonna be equally big. So we don't have to specify the number, only the, the breakpoint at which point they should become that horizontal layout. So here I just picked a uh, large, but we have uh, three of them, right? So now we can place the cards in here and um, the cards will automatically take up the width of that column, right? So Bootstrap does not give these cards a set width. So it does not it does not give these cards a width of let's say um, 100 pixels. It will make them um, it will make them 100% by default. However, here in the example, you know they they do want to have they do want to give it a, a particular width just so it, they can show you how it looks like. So here they actually do it with the style attribute, right? So when you copy it from this example, make sure that you pay attention to that because we actually don't want them to have a set width like that, right? They should they should simply take up the width of this column in which they are placed, which it actually will do by default. But you do need to make sure that you don't. Uh, copy that uh, style attribute. So I'm just going to copy my car from the example here because it already has the correct text and images and so on. Right, so now I've placed uh, these cards in their respective columns, just three. Right, and we'll see how this works. Okay, that's a little bit big, but it does work. Oh, however, right, it does work. They are stacked, right, they are stacked. And at the large breakpoint, they do become horizontal. However, they're sitting right against the edge of the viewport, right? So here we can use that container class again to restrain the uh, width. So we can put that entire row in a container class, right? This is a very handy uh, class that you get out of the box, right? So now I've put everything in that container class and now it has restrained that uh, width, right? So now it doesn't sit right against the edge, right? So now as, as I make it smaller and smaller, you can see we have a very nice looking layout here. Let me actually make it bigger again. So one other thing, by the way, about these sections is that on very uh, small viewports, small devices, this is a lot of vertical space, right? So here on, on the top as well. So let's say that here we have padding on the top, right? Um, maybe we don't want that on smaller devices, only when it, when it has reached a particular uh, width and bigger. So what we can say here, you can you can also do that with padding. You can add those breakpoint uh, suffixes. Oh, let me close this. So here we have um, the following, right? So we can say add padding on the top and bottom, but only when it has reached the medium breakpoint and bigger. So now you can see on smaller devices, it's it's a little bit more suitable. I think it looks a little bit better. And then on wider viewports, yeah, so here on wider viewports, uh, we get more padding, right? A little bit subtle perhaps, but I want to show you that you can also use these things, MD on padding and margin and so on. Right? I'll add it here for the packages as well. By the way, if this was helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. Also, check out my courses on CSS and JavaScript if you want to take those skills to an advanced level. Because in there, we will build some beautiful real-world projects from scratch so you can see how everything fits together and really master CSS or JavaScript. And I will also release other courses soon like React and Node.js. So if you want to be notified, then make sure you are subscribed to the email newsletter. You can find the link in the description. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon.